Yeah, but let's let's go ahead and bring Craig in for this conversation because I really I really oh, want to yeah. hear what he's got going on. So come on, there he is. Go. Yes, sir. Hey. <laughs> Oh, we, we can't hear him either. There, there we go. We got it. Yeah. There yeah. you are. Now we got you. <laughs> How are you today? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Very doing good. good. We're guys, fun. guys, good and ladies. Me and you do. Yeah. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> well, so so far, Foster, these Fosterisms sound very familiar to me. Yeah. Right. <laughs> For those yeah. those of us that that are connected Craig to Foster, Craig. we hear a lot of this a lot. That's right. <laughs> Craig, yeah, yeah. You guys probably hear me talk more times than you want to hear. All right. <laughs> you know what's fun? Uh, I've been a, a like a kind of a professional speaker now for many years. And in, in addition to mm -hmm. the actual work that I do. But when I started yeah. out, I wasn't always a professional speaker. Mm -hmm. I practiced by helping job seekers and career search groups that Foster ran all over Dallas and yeah. Fort Worth. Craig and I dug ditches, man. We did. That's right. <laughs> yep, we did. We dug, we dug all the ditches. Yeah, we did. Now we're trying to pull ourselves out. Yeah, right. yep. that was 15, 15 and 20 years ago. 15, 20 years ago. Oh, mm -hmm. my goodness. So I, I have a question. So, so Craig, you've you've had a very interesting career. And, and one of the things that you've done is you launched a series of events that I knew about well before I knew you as a person. Yep. So tell us a little bit, first of all, about who you are and what you do, mm -hmm. if you could. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm a consultant to employers. I also help job seekers as a coach, but uh, you know I'm a consultant to employers, and I help them communicate their corporate culture better to job candidates and help with employee engagement and executive leadership, brand presence, things like that. So my my forte is really the employer and personal brand thing. But what I do is good for sales and marketing. And so I teach teams uh, all over the world in all of those disciplines, sales teams, recruiting teams, how to use uh, digital branding and marketing techniques to attract customers or great talent to themselves or their organizations. And I also do this for job seekers to help them attract the attention of employers. Uh, and in doing all this, um, I started kind of practicing what I preach. I'm a guy who does. I don't just say things. I, I Yeah, that's true. I, sh I show it, right? So yeah. I started speaking about it and talking about it, and I started my own conference to sort of walk the walk and invite my friends who are real smart uh, to share what they know with uh, recruiters all over the world. And this was back in a time. So I started the first Twitter chat for recruiters. Uh, uh -huh. That was back in 2008. Yeah, that was back there. That's right, TalentNet. And uh, <laughs> it was at a time where people didn't have money to go to a big conference. Right. And, right. and so they were complaining and they said, you know, we should just host our own because we've got all this great talent in the Dallas area. So yep. in 2009, I hosted the first TalentNet live conference. And that was at PepsiCo's Frito-Lay headquarters. That was good. That's right. And it was good. And Foster was there in the audience. Yeah, he's, in, he's in all the pictures. He's been to a bunch of them. Um, and, he's been, and he's been a part of a bunch of them as well, which has been great for me. But yeah. so last year, we celebrated our 10-year anniversary of hosting conferences. I host one uh, every year in the spring in Austin, usually at Whole Foods headquarters on the first mm -hmm. day at South by Southwest. Mm -hmm. And then one in Dallas at a corporate headquarters. And last year in uh, November or December, I think it was December, we had about 350 people who were recruiting teams and their leaders join us at Toyota's at uh, Toyota. North American headquarters. Right. And yeah, and we're scheduled to be on site there again, uh, November 20th of this year. I'm not sure it's going to happen. We yeah. had to move. Yeah, we yeah. had to move our, our Austin event. Uh, that was supposed to be in March, and it will be next Friday on July 17th from 1 to 5 in the afternoon Central Time. And you can find out uh, information about that at talentnetlive.com. It's scrolling across the bottom, by the way, guys. Talentnetlive.com. Right? And then you'll just click on the TalentNet Austin event. Uh, and uh, if you want a discount on tickets... You can use discount code PATHLINKS with a Y, P-A-T-H-L-Y-N-K-S, okay? And that is oh. that is Fanny Dunnigan's personal yes. uh, discount code. 
Yeah. Uh, oh. So I'm encouraging people to sign up with her discount code. And right. uh, Pathlinks is a, a, a great partner of TalentNet, and Fanny does a whole lot of good stuff with us. So, yes. oh, and, and yes. Fanny's another yeah. great one, guys. Connect, connect, connect to Fanny Dugan. Um, I'm sure we can get her LinkedIn dropped here in the comments. Uh, mm -hmm. So Nina, if you could please, she's phenomenal to connect with and connect with Craig as well. Trust me, you will get great value uh, connecting with him as well. Craig, so I'm smelling something here. There you go. Mm -hmm. All right, we got to talk. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm I, getting I, into the recruit. <laughs> yeah. So one I thing, Craig, I that I really wanted your opinion on because you've You've been around the market for a long time. You've worked with around recruiters for a long time and you've, mm -hmm. and you've worked outside of recruiting as well. Um, so you know the business, you've got a good pulse on the market. So with everything changing right now with COVID and all of that, mm -hmm. let's start with what do you see happening with the job market? Mm -hmm. And what, what is your prediction? Mm -hmm. Since they're saying that this is still the first wave and, and yeah. all of that, what is your prediction with what's gonna happen in the job market? So I think that um, the economy will bounce back uh, faster than the job market will bounce back. So I think jobs are going to be the most latent uh, issue that we have with this. Um, they were one of the first things impacted, but they'll also be one of the last things to be fixed. Right. So we may be back to 80% by the end of next year, but we certainly will not be back to the type of unemployment numbers we had before all this happened until probably the year after. So I'm guessing there's a, a two year lag on this. Yeah, um, there's 40 million people have been affected. Yeah. Right. right, yeah. Right, and and a big part of it is going to be um, like restaurant workers and, and things like that, that, <laughs> that they're, where are they gonna go? You know, right. <laughs> everything being shut down, mm -hmm. it's, it's gonna heavily impact them. What about, so with that in mind, and, and, and obviously we're all very excited about the remote pivot, right? Do you think that, that's something that's going to stick, that remote aspect. Yes, I do. So um, I've talked to lots of leaders. I do a podcast on uh, InsideTalent.org mm -hmm. where I talk to leaders uh, all over the place about what their plans are, what their thoughts are about this. We've had lots of great conversations. And you know, I'm finding that most companies are saying that they will not be back at full capacity in their offices until 2021 for certain, and that they will have the option of whether or not to uh, be remote. And so I talked to a talent acquisition leader uh, just yesterday at Cisco, and she's out in the Bay Area. And uh, Foster, you know this lady, it's Day oh. Strong. Yep. Oh, yeah. Day. yeah. Oh, right. yeah. And so I'm going to be training their uh, recruiting Hi, team day. coming up pretty soon. Yeah. And, uh, and she says... You know, uh, we're not going to be back in the office till 2021. And even then, mm -hmm. I might not go back. I might go one day a week. But they're giving right. us that option. And that's a big company. That's Cisco, right? Yeah, I mean, that's Cisco. huge. Yeah, they're yeah. massive. Yeah. Yeah. It, for anybody that doesn't know what they are, I mean, that's that's enormous. That's almost right. like saying all state insurance mm -hmm. or something like that. It's, it's a huge we were, company. We were <laughs> asked to, um, to, to, to create a uh, job seeker networking uh, group at Microsoft campus right here in Dallas. Mm -hmm. And I think pretty much it's probably the same going on at Microsoft. I didn't talk to anybody there, mm -hmm. but I would imagine that the same thing that Craig just said is probably going on at Microsoft as well. Right. Um, it's Path Links, by the way, P-A-T-H-L-Y-N-K-S. Not, not That's right. That's right. Yeah. Not X. Uh, right. That is the yeah. discount code for uh, so. But back to Microsoft, Foster, you're talking about their campus right there on 161, right? 161. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard the same thing that yeah. um, they are not planning to be back in full force until uh, next year. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with uh, VRBO in Austin, the, uh, it's now oh. TripAdvisor, their headquarters. Yeah. They Trip will not be advisor. right. That's right. So uh, one thing to you guys, so we, we have a comment here. Um, so honesty is, is great, but that is a terrifying figure and makes you yeah. feel like any job option is a good option. So one thing that we've been hearing a lot is if people have a desperate feeling, right? And like, mm -hmm. they just have to get a job. They just have to do this. Okay, a few things I'll say, and then I really want your opinion on this, Craig, yeah. is so just because the job market is changing, and just because 
we're and this is all guessing by the way guys we we don't know any of this okay know. so no. we don't know we're guessing okay this is just our thoughts based on what we're seeing okay um and and let's say that the the job yeah, you know, the, the unemployment numbers, it's going to take a while to get that back. Well, number one, remember that a lot of those are not going to be what's called professional level uh, positions, right? So if that's what you're seeking, it's going to affect you a little bit less than some of the others because restaurants and things like that are what's going to take a lot in retail. It's going to take a whole, a really, really long time to come back. That's right. But so that's number one. So, so keep in mind what types of roles this is really going to impact. Number two is, just because it's it's different, we're just saying we're not say, saying necessarily either that there's not gonna be a lot of jobs. A lot of jobs are staying remote. So one of the things that's happening. So when you hear Craig say that these people aren't gonna be back in the office, he's not saying that there's no jobs at those companies, right? That's right. Yeah. Right. So so they're just they're just remote, which is kind of mm -hmm. great, right? So then you can get a job with anybody. And if a company is not doing remote work right now, I almost don't even know what to say. <laughs> Honestly, that's well, a whole other. <laughs> yeah, and there's a good <laughs> there's a good point about that, right? So you always want to apply to jobs where you actually fit the job, right? Because if you right. don't, you're just making it hard on recruiters to shuffle through to find the people who are a good fit, okay? Right. There's, there's technology that'll weed you out as well. But if you apply to too many jobs, they, a lot of these companies use the same technology. So if you apply to too many jobs that you're not a fit for, that algorithm learns about who you are. And yeah, you don't, it does. You don't get put to the top for any job. So yeah. don't, don't be the serial applier. But- right. If you see a job that is that is a fit for you, but the location is not where you want to be and you're not you know, willing to relocate, I say go ahead and apply to that job anyway, because there's a very good chance it could be done remotely. Right. And, and, and also they don't all put yes. remote work on there. So that is true. They don't all. Um, some companies are still being stubborn, but not all of them put it on there. So that right now in general, that, that wouldn't work. But right now with COVID, he's 100 percent correct. The other thing is. I know that you need to pay your bills, okay? Nobody here is saying we don't get that, all right? And and trust us, you know, our, our jobs are not the same that they were before all of this either, okay? Yeah. Um, in fact, some of the people that have been on the show today don't currently have jobs. They, they know what they're doing, they're experts, but because of everything going on, their business is paused or their job got, you know, they got furloughed too or whatever. Yeah. We, we, we all are in the same boat to some extent or another, okay guys? So here's what I say to that, to that response. I just need to pay bills. I just need to pay bills. I just need to pay bills. First of all, again, don't ever show your desperation in any interview. <laughs> that's, that's not going to work. Just like we discussed, just like with the dating world, it's desperation is not attractive, right? It's not going to help you. The other thing is do things like contract work to, to hold you over. There's a lot of contract jobs out there, guys. Do not, do not keep, limit yourself to full-time work right now. Take those contract jobs. Take those part-time jobs. There's a take reason those, for that. Yes. Take all of those jobs because you never, first of all, you never know what it's going to turn into. And also they'll tide you over until you do find that next role that really, really fits for you. Okay. So do those kind of things. That's how you tide yourself over effectively. Um, and, and the other thing too is um, keep yourself um, always keep yourself open and, and, and don't necessarily expect a job to be perfect. You need to be flexible too. It's important for the employer to be flexible and offer remote and good benefits and good pay and all that kind of stuff and to be flexible, but you need to be flexible too. Okay. Just like in a relationship or anything else, nothing is perfect. Right. And you have to be willing to be a little bit flexible too and go a little bit outside of your comfort zone. And so one thing I see a lot is people will say, oh, I really, really need a job, but they won't commute 45 minutes or they won't, <laughs> or, or they won't take this job because they don't like the title or they won't take this job because it would require a relocation. Well, guys, sometimes even if it's not what you want to hear, if there's a great job, you need to pick up and move. And I get that you have your kids and they're in school and, and all this kind of stuff, kids will get over it. I did. Other people I know moved around as kids. They'll be fine. <laughs> so while it's not ideal, don't 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 hold yourself back with those kind of limitations either. And and be open to different titles and different positions and different commutes and and those kinds of things as well. Even though there is a forty million people out of a job, Craig and I know that. You purple squirrels are still purple squirrels. You That's guys right. are hard to find. And you know what? If we find one of you guys and we've got a strong need 
we find one of you guys, uh, a company should be willing to do exactly what Craig said. You'd be surprised mm -hmm. what you can work out for that particular opportunity. Purple squirrel. He's got the purple squirrel. Look. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> This is a big recruiting term, you guys. This is something that all of us say. Craig Find a purple squirrel. purple squirrel. Well, you are too, Catherine. So, yeah. Oh, everybody everybody yes. knows about the purple squirrel. It's, it's a I thing. Don't um, what a purple squirrel is, guys. Because, you know, a lot of people looking at us don't know what we're talking about. We're recruiters. So when an employer wants something that is basically non-existent, for instance, they want a uh, a .NET developer for $40,000, right? That doesn't exist. That is a purple squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have a unique that's, skill set, right, Liam Neeson? That's called, instance, that's called, yeah, yeah unique skill set. .NET exactly. developer <laughs> with 20 years experience. That's right. <laughs> oh, yeah. my goodness. Oh, my gosh. Oh, so I, we had a couple of very interesting comments here that I want to address. One was Ellen O'Brien says, I had a contract job offer, but when the contracting company started the background check, they couldn't complete it because New Jersey is still shut down. Right. So <laughs> sometimes you're going to have to pause a little bit. The other thing is they, they, I don't know if the company may know this or not. You can actually still get job, uh, uh, get background checks completed. It's just very slow. It just may take a few weeks. Mm -hmm. There's, um, there's also a lot of companies that use an automated system. And so you don't need the state to be open for that. So don't be discouraged by that. Right. Absolutely. <clears throat> absolutely. Um, so, and, and do keep looking for those. Um, we also had a question, is there a specific network that has a good contract placement that you would personally recommend network or website? Yes. Upwork. Upwork is, is the place to be. <clears throat> so, I mean, you could join Fiverr as well. If you do things like, graphic design or ghostwriting mm -hmm. and things like that. Fiverr and Upwork, F-I-V-E-R-R. -R. Mm -hmm. and, and Upwork is just U-P-W-O-R-K. Also, yep. if you're technical, if you're a developer or something like that, then definitely Dice.com is a great place. Oh, to God, my yes. oh, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Also, uh, Project Help You Grow that we keep pushing, and you can also see their their job listings on our site, which is uh, careerlaunch2020.com. They have jobs all over the world. They have contract jobs. They have part-time jobs. They have all that Definitely, definitely connect to those guys. Um, also, look for for local uh, recruiting firms in your area. Okay, we're not necessarily going to know every recruiter that's that's ever existed, right? Uh, but uh, you can message us privately. We might know somebody. Um, but also, just just research recruiters in your area and and look for them. Some of the big companies that specialize in contracts. You have uh, in DFW, you have Manpower. Um, you have um, Kelly Services, things like that. Um, they have a lot of contract jobs yeah, right now. So a lot. Many. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. And connect with Foster too. Check, <laughs> check out his stuff. He'll, he'll help you out too, especially if you're in the DFW area. Also, if you happen to be a recruiter or in the talent acquisition mm -hmm. space, Google recruiters helping recruiters and yes. there's a network of resources for you there. So, yes. and that was started uh, by some very good friends of mine, Jerry Crispin and some other folks. Jerry. And yeah, and it's a it's a good it's a good network. Uh, can so, I tell you a little story about this purple squirrel real quick? Yes, let's oh, yeah, do it. Please. So I got this uh, for keynoting uh, SourceCon a couple of years ago. Oh man! Oh yeah. Yep. And um, SourceCon is owned by ERE Media, a guy named David Manister, who's a friend of mine, and he and I and a lot of the other uh, conference owners in the space are all having to pivot to this virtual event thing. Um, and, mm -hmm. you know, because we can't host in-person events anymore. And that's our bread and butter. Now, I right. also had a regular job. I was working for Allegis Global Solutions and was a uh, consulting leader there. And it's a big, one of the biggest staffing firms in the world. And I got laid off as well. But mm -hmm. I have my pivot already set up and ready to go, right? My my conferences are converting to virtual. I do this consulting work. And I go to three of the companies who would normally be a company that might hire me to be their head of marketing or head mm -hmm. of consulting or whatever. I go to three of them and I say, look, I know that you could use a guy like me, but maybe you can't afford me right now. You can have a third of my time and I'm going to pick two competitor or two other companies that aren't competitors of yours and give them a third of my time as well. And so huh. it's a third, a third and a third. And that's how I spend my time. And then my nights are spent putting on talent net and doing, you know, other things. So the, that's really interesting. 
Yeah, right. so no, I like that. Yeah, so yeah, start, I like that. Start your LLC right now because right now. it may be a little while before the right job that can afford you comes along. That's fine. Start your LLC and offer three companies, you know, a third of your time or do right. you know, a different kind of split, but you can absolutely do great work for a company uh, by doing it that way. You may end up working more than a third, but it's going to help you pay those bills. <laughs> well, and, and the truth is, and, and, back, and this goes back, I mean, even Anna Morgan, who you know as, as well, Craig, uh, she's essentially said the same thing. Don't put all your eggs in one basket and be prepared and have that pivot ready. So guys, get creative yeah. right now. This is the time. Yeah, you'll see on my LinkedIn profile, and I highly suggest connecting with me there because I do some really oh, yes. incredible LinkedIn uh, SEO strategy and profile optimization stuff. And you'll see on my profile that I've had this job with TalentNet since 2008, mm -hmm. uh, right? Mm -hmm. Or 2010, so I forget when I started the LLC, but for a long time. And so anytime I'm between you know, what I would call a full-time employer, um, I am, you know, working for talent net. So that pivot is already set up and I keep right. it going in the background. I keep it active. I keep content going out through there so that that's never dormant. So my personal brand stays active all the time, no matter what. And very often right. when I go to work for a company, they, they maybe don't have the situation where they can hire a full-time employee mm -hmm. right off the bat. So I go to work for them as a contractor first and I say, you know what, let me get this set up. And if you like what I'm doing and want to continue it, if you've got an FTE position at some point, we'll pivot right. into that. No big deal. Right. And guys, that's, by the way, exactly how my company got started is it was basically a side hustle and it was part time. And then I just went, OK, <laughs> well, it wasn't exactly part time, but it was it was a side hustle type thing. And um, and it's. It's, it's taken off. So, I mean, guys, never be afraid to do that kind of thing. And thank you so much, Craig, for joining us. Definitely connect to Craig uh, 100% uh, on LinkedIn. We've dropped his his profile into the comments. Connect to him, reach out to him, participate in his events. And what was that disco discount code one more time, Craig? It's Pathlinks, P-A-T-H-L-Y-N-K-S, uh, for cheap tickets to TalentNet, which will be <laughs> A really great event. It's going to start off with a great conversation with Torin Ellis, who is a diversity and inclusion leader in our industry. And we're going to we're going to have some straight talk with Torin for about 40 minutes and a big Q&A session that is going to be outstanding. Awesome. Thank you so very much, Craig. Have a re wonderful rest of the day. We appreciate you being hey, on. Also, connect with me oh. on Twitter and Instagram at fishdogs. And you can check me out at fishdogs.com if you need somebody to help you with a virtual event or to keynote a virtual event. I'm yeah. at your service. Absolutely. He is the best. He is. He is, the best. He is guys. Um, and so thank you so much, Craig. Have a wonderful rest of the day.